Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I am one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. So I'm someone who has had kind of a rocky relationship with audiobooks. I'm going to take you through sort of like a brief history of my experience with audiobooks. So my first experience with audiobooks was when I was in college. Sarah Vowell's Assassination Vacation came out and I read it and really enjoyed it and I had heard that the audiobook had a bunch of like celebrity narrators on it so I bought it through iTunes and I started to listen to it but then I realized one I can't re read or read listen to books. <laughs> I basically just got bored because I knew the story already because I had just read it. Um, and two, I found that everyone talks really slow when they're doing audiobooks. I think it's because they're like trying very hard to stick to the text like they're reading. Maybe they're like instructed to read a little bit slower because you know people have to listen and comprehend the things that they're saying. So if they talk too fast then they might not understand. However, as I'm sure many of you guys are aware, I talk really fast and I'm used to people talking fast. So <laughs> audiobooks were always really difficult for me. Fast forward a couple of years, I join booktube and people are talking about audiobooks and I find out that you can check out audiobooks, like digital audiobooks through the library using the Overdrive app. So I decided to give it a try. I download Overdrive and I download some audiobooks and again, all of them move way too slow for me and I was getting super bored while listening to them. Eventually I learned that you can speed up audiobooks and that was like a huge game changer for me. <laughs> so then I get an Audible account and I am thoroughly enjoying audiobooks but at this point I'm only able to listen to nonfiction on audio. Anytime I try a fiction book on audio I end up giving up like two hours in or so. I don't know what it was about listening to fiction on audio. I think it's partially just because of the way my brain operates and processes information. I had a really hard time listening to things and remembering the details of the story in the same way that I do when I'm reading. So fiction books weren't working quite as well for me and I had spent like a number of years listening to podcasts so I felt like nonfiction books felt more like having these small little podcast episodes to listen to that were just all on the same topic or something along those lines. The only fiction audiobooks I could get through were the Veronica Mars audiobooks because I think Kristen Bell narrates the first Veronica Mars audiobook. So it felt like you were basically watching an episode of Veronica Mars because if you haven't seen the show, um, Kristen Bell narrates parts of the show. So the transition from that to the audiobook felt really natural. And so I could basically just like visualize everything in my head. However, there were like a bunch of different sort of like confounding factors that happened in my life. Um, I didn't really have a time and a place to listen to audiobooks. My commute a couple of years ago was maybe like 15 to 20 minutes in a car one way um, and you could say yes you can get through like a decent amount of an audiobook with that much of a commute five days a week but for me having those like short snippets meant that I was always like breaking in the middle of chapters and I felt like I was never really connecting with any of the material that I was listening to so I basically just stopped listening to audiobooks. Fast forward a little bit and last spring I got a new job and so then I started commuting on the train and one of my friends was like oh you can start listening to audiobooks again and I was like no why would I do that I can just read a physical book on the train because I'm not driving so I don't have to pay attention to like visualize where I'm going. I just have to make sure I get off on the right stop which is pretty easy to do. So yeah I had my Kindle. I read a bunch of books on the train. I still do. Um, I would get through like at least a book a week just with my train commute but then it got cold. So I'm currently experiencing my first winter in this new job with this commute and I'm realizing that in Chicago it gets really cold which is not a new realization but while you're commuting or at least while I'm commuting I don't want to have like my hands out of my pockets. <laughs> Like I have gloves on, sometimes more than one pair of gloves on, and my I want my hands to be in my pockets the whole time so that way they are not exposed to the cold wind here in Chicago. And especially like these past couple of weeks we've had days that are like below zero highs. <laughs> so, or maybe single digit highs. So it's been especially cold this winter. And so it has made me re-fall in love with audiobooks. And I've seen like a significant change in the way that I personally have been experiencing audiobooks. And I think that there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that when I'm commuting, I have like a good 
almost hour that I can listen to an audiobook. Basically, I put my headphones on like as soon as I leave the house and from like my house door to the door of my work, it takes me about an hour total, including like walking time and everything like that. And that's a good amount of time to get at least a chapter, if not like two or three chapters of a book in my ears. Um, and I feel like that has helped counteract the problem I was having before where it was always so sporadic. So I feel like I'm fully diving into these books now and it feels like I'm more immersed in these worlds and I can actually really enjoy audiobooks. The second thing that has happened is that my library no longer uses Overdrive anymore, it uses Libby. Um, now this video isn't sponsored by Libby, I know that Libby sponsors some of our other book ride videos, but Libby really is a fantastic audiobook listening app. I like the interface so much more. It's so much easier to find books for me personally on Libby than it was on Overdrive. I felt like with Overdrive I was constantly losing my place and in Libby it isn't really happening anymore. So yeah, I feel like Libby has really made me more comfortable with listening to audiobooks. Um, so I don't even need an Audible subscription, at least not at the moment. I think another thing that has really helped me personally is the fact that I took like a good year, maybe two years almost, without listening to audiobooks really. And since I wasn't li really listening to audiobooks, a lot of the books that are really great on audio are now ones that I can try. Um, so I'm currently listening to When Breath Becomes Air. I was listening to the Harry Potter audiobooks earlier in the month and really enjoying that. I haven't gone through all of them. I sort of am saving the rest of the series for when I have sort of a lull in audiobooks. I just finished listening to Border Crime by Trevor Noah, which everyone was raving about last year and I finally listened to this year. So I feel like I have the sort of like significant number of options to go to with audiobooks because there were a lot of books that didn't really work for me in print that worked really well or worked better in audio. One of those examples was Artemis by Andy Weir. I was having such a hard time reading that book in print. The way that it's set up is very like plot driven and Generally speaking, I don't really enjoy plot-driven books, but I knew that Rosario Dawson narrated the audiobook of it and so I figured I would give that a try and I was able to get through the whole book on audio because it felt more like a movie sort of situation. So basically what I'm saying is I really enjoy audiobooks again. Now when it gets warmer, there's a very good chance I'm going to stop listening to audiobooks again because again, I still prefer reading a book over listening to a book because of just again my the way my brain comprehends things. I always keep things that I see visually better than things that I hear. So once I'm comfortable having my hands out of my pockets again, <laughs> I will be going back to reading physical or ebooks. But it's been really nice to know that audiobooks aren't a complete no for me because it felt like for such a long time that I just was not going to enjoy audiobooks anymore. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you guys enjoy listening to audiobooks versus reading physical books or the other way around or if you've had good or bad experiences with audiobooks. I think that if you're someone who has had a hard time with audiobooks. I feel like part of it is like finding the right audiobook and finding the right situation for you to listen to an audiobook in. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below what your experiences have been with audiobooks, whether or not you are currently listening to one or not. And also if you have any good audiobook suggestions, leave them down in the comments below because again, I'm behind on audiobook listens. So I feel like I have all of the really great ones left to discover. So yeah, that's all I have for this week and I will see you guys next week. Bye.